where Job is defending himself to his friends. And he's defending by saying, God has done some mighty things. So hear God's word from Job at chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. So Job said to his friends, but ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all humankind. Then our gospel reading this morning is from the gospel according to Matthew in the sixth chapter, verses 25 through 34. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus said, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run oh, after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And then our epistle reading from the letters of Paul comes from the book of Colossians, in the first chapter, verse 15 through 20 as we hear Paul defend Jesus' place and authority in the world. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Jesus is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. Christ is the beginning, and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is God's holy word for us on this day. <coughs> Each year, Earth Day, April 22nd, marks the anniversary of the birth of the modern environmental movement that began in 1970. Earth Day 1970 gave voice to that emerging consciousness challenge, channeling the energy of the anti-war protests and movements and putting environmental concerns on the front page. 48 years ago, on that first Earth Day, 20 million Americans took to the streets, parks, and auditoriums to demonstrate, 
not against the Vietnam War, but for a healthy, sustainable environment in massive coast-to-coast -coast rallies. Thousands of colleges and universities organized protests, not against war, but against the deterioration of the environment. So today, the fight for a clean environment continues with increasing urgency as the ravages of climate change become more manifest every single day. Today, we celebrate Earth Day by increasing our awareness and education and being an active part of protecting the creation God has gifted us as caretakers on this planet Earth. I wish to begin this morning by sharing a letter to all people that's attributed to Chief Seattle, who was one of the most respected chiefs of the Northwest Native American nations, the Choctaw, Cherokee, Navajo, Iroquois, and Sioux. In his response to the President of the United States asking his people to sell their land back in the mid-1850s. And while you hear these powerful words from Chief Seattle, I also invite you to imagine God's voice sharing this response to our world, <coughs> even today. How can you buy the sky? How can you own the rain and the wind? Every part of the earth is sacred to our people. Every pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every meadow and humming insect, all are holy in the memory and experience of our people. We know the sap that courses through the trees as we know the blood that courses through our veins. We are a part of the earth, and it is a part of us. The perfumed flowers are our sisters. The bear, the deer, the great eagle, these are our brothers. The rocky crests, the meadows, the ponies, all belong to the same family. The shining water that moves from the streams and rivers is not just water, but the blood of your ancestors. If we sell you our land, you must remember that it is sacred. Each ghostly reflection in the clear waters of the lakes tells of memories of the life of our people. The water's murmur is the voice of your great-great-grandmother. The rivers are our brothers. They quench our thirst. They carry our canoes and feed our children. You must give to the rivers the kindness you would give to any brother or sister. And the air is precious. It shares its spirit with all of the life it supports. The wind that gave us our first breath also receives our last sigh. You must keep the land and air apart and sacred as a place where one can go and taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadow flowers. This we know. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Teach your children what you have been taught. The earth is our mother. What befalls the earth befalls all the sons and daughters of the earth. Remember, the earth does not belong to humans. Humans belong to the earth. All things are connected like the blood that unites us all. And we do not weave the web of life we are merely a strand in it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. We love this earth as a newborn loves its mother's heartbeat. If we sell you our land, love it as we have loved it. Care for it as we have cared for it. Hold in your mind the memory of the land as it is when you receive it. Preserve the land and the air and the rivers for your children's children, and love it as God loves us all. As we are part of the land, 
You too are part of the land. As the earth is precious to us, so it is precious to you. One thing we know, there is only one God. No human can be apart. We are brothers and sisters after all. In this reading, Chief Seattle refers to the web of life. And so we're going to do um, a little demonstration of what that looks like. So I imagine every one of you has a favorite part of creation, whether it be a creature, whether it be a beautiful flower, um, or um, just being out in the Rocky Mountain air. And I want you to think about what that favorite one thing might be in creation. And we're going to uh, weave them together. So Calvin, what's your favorite? Okay, so, but to have a dirt bike, either what part of creation made that happen, or is it the actual land? Okay, the land. Hang on, it's about to tie it. Okay, you got this? Okay. All right. Rod, what's yours? Butterflies. Okay, I'm going to toss this to you, I think. Okay, who's got one? Yeah, be careful. Oh, there you go. Jeannie. Flowers. Flowers, okay. Either to me or Jeannie. Oh, jeez. Ready? <laughs> Ready. <laughs> well done. Right, who else? Who's got one? Okay, Julie. Enjoy the raptors, the hawks, and the falcons. I'll let you throw it. Okay. Actually, I'm going to hang on to it. Don't let go. Okay. We'll put, it, we'll put it behind you. Yeah, I'm not going to. No, because oh. they're not going to take it. No, I take somebody out. Sure is nothing. Okay, who else? Teresa. Dogs. What was that? Dogs. Dogs. Oh, so bad. We're going to get tied up. Get it. <laughs> I totally dropped the ball. <laughs> All right, who else? All right, yes. Sunsets. Sunsets, perfect. That's a great one, especially in Colorado. The rainbow. Oh. There you go. All right, Larry. Buffalo grass. Oh, buffalo grass. to the buffalo grass, to the creatures 
in the air, the sea, the water, the rocks are all part of it. Um, and we're linked to it. Because if one thing happens, so what happens when there's um, a wildfire on the grasses of the prairies? Um, right. Um, so whatever eats that grass is affected. So if, Larry, if with a fire, if Larry drops his string, then all of a sudden that's impacting the people on, or the critters, or the creation, let's say that creation on either end. So no matter what happens along this, every piece is affected. Whether you are the closest to that buffalo grass, or whether you're the land that also is impacted by a fire. So whatever we do as human beings, you notice we didn't put ourselves on here, did we? <laughs> Um, which I think is okay for today, because we need to think about that the earth is not just ours. Um, it is under our responsibility. So you can drop your strings. Thank you for participating in that. Um, so we need to think of this image of even the spider. <sighs> So think of this web. Each strand represents life. At the end of each strand is a gift from God. It's a living gift of God's creation. As the days of creation unfolded, God first created this earth and then gifted this planet with light in the midst of darkness. Placed the stars, the sun, the moon, the sky, gave us the seas and dry ground, the land. And then the land produced vegetation birds, water creatures, living creatures of the land, and then humankind in the same image of the Creator. In all of this, God said, it is good. We know each strand of God's living world is connected. And we know that God's world, Chief Seattle's letter, and our own conscience, consciences conscience, tell us that we are but a strand of the web of life, and whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. God has gifted us all with an amazing world. And just as important, God blessed humankind, created them to be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth, and be stewards of it caretakers of all that God had created. And as God's representatives in the image of our Creator, we are to share as God's servants, as the stewards of all of God's world. God gave it all to us, the people of God, created out of the hand of God, and this gift is ours. Not just for the taking, but for the taking care of, so that every living and breathing gift of God might continue to have breath, and the breath of life in it. Our scripture today, just three of many, echo the greatness of God's gift of this earth, and how important each and living creature is to both God and to the web of life. Job chapter 12, that reading of Job's reply to his three friends that had failed him. Instead of their loyalty, they gave unneeded advice. So Job tells his friends that God holds the judgment, showing all creation that God does as the Lord pleases. The hand of God has done all of this. Ask the animals what they think. Let them teach you. Let the birds tell you what's going on. 
Put your ear to the earth. Learn the basics. Listen. The fish in the ocean will tell you their stories. Isn't it clear that they all know and agree that God is sovereign? That the Creator holds all things in His hand. Every living soul, yes, every breathing creature. Isn't this all just common sense? As common as the sense of taste. <coughs> All things are a gift from God. All things are under God's control, held in God's hand. And the hand of God has done all things. Do not worry. God has it all under control. Do not be anxious about your daily needs. Jesus' words from the Gospels are all part of the Sermon on the Mount his inaugural address, or discourse, explaining the expectation of the members of Christ's kingdom. Walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. Have you ever seen color and design quite like it? If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think God will attend to you? take pride in you, give the best for you? What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting, so you can respond to God's giving. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. Stop and smell the roses. These are the basics of life. What will we eat and drink, our bodies, and even what we will wear, the clothing that will be given. We are all part of God's special care and mercy. The images of God's care for the birds of the air, the lilies, and the grass emphasize God's role as the creator and sustainer of all life. If God cares for these, even though they do nothing to prepare for their future, God also cares for us. God knows that what people need, especially those who live with daily concerns, Making food and clothing concerns the focus of our attention adds nothing to our lives and merely separates us through our worries from the Creator who created everything, including us and the image of God. The birds of heaven and the lilies of the field are symbols to direct our attention at the marvelous interdependence the numerous, too many to count, life forms on the earth, the web of life. These words also invite us to reconsider the relationship that links human beings to other living things. God's care for birds and lilies is a demonstration of a proper appreciation of divine providence and care as reflected in the balance of nature including humankind. Jesus is promising everyone on the mountaintop and around the world God's care for humankind alongside that of small creatures that we would normally take for granted. Strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Our focus needs to be on the Creator. We need to worry instead about the Christ we serve, the light in our eye, and the place where our heart is. We strive first for God's kingdom by being people of justice, peacemakers, caretakers, and people of the earth by looking for signs of and giving witness to God's power and presence day in 
and day out, 365 days of the year. We are encouraged to share the resources God gives us more openly with one another, trusting that God will always supply what we really need. Sharing the world that God has created for us, at the same time caring for that creation as we would any gift from the Creator. Paul's letter to the people of Colossae is sometimes referred to as an early Christian hymn. Psalms and songs from the Spirit used in worship as words of praise. It has two parts. The first, to show Christ's supremacy in creation, and then Christ's supremacy in redemption. Christ is the image of God, or the radiance of God's glory, and the exact representation of God's being. Christ, as the firstborn Son of God, reflects and reveals God, and has certain rights in relation to all of creation. All things. All creation, everything has been created through Christ and for him. Jesus is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In all things, everything on heaven and earth, Christ has full authority. God, through Christ, has reconciled all things, both on earth and all things in heaven. Back to the creation story in Genesis, just for a moment. When Adam and Eve, God's first created humankind, sinned and were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, not only was the harmony between God and human beings destroyed, but also disorder came into creation. That whole web of life was affected by their decision to eat from the tree of knowledge, the tree of right and wrong. The whole of creation was out of harmony with the Creator. But the good news is this. When Christ died on the cross, he made peace possible between God and humans, and Jesus restored the harmony. In the physical world, the earth, all of creation. Jesus' life and death have reconciled all things, all creatures, all humans and animals, all plants and flowers, lakes and rivers, stars and sky, planets and galaxies, fish and birds, insects and grasses, everything. All things on earth and in heaven have been reconciled made new with God by making peace through Christ's blood shed on the cross. Christ's res resurrection was the beginning of a new humanity, a recreation in which we Christians participate. We are challenged to take on that role as keeper of the treasure, caretakers of that which is recreated, made new. Christ has reconciled us to and with the Creator, meaning we have responsibility to take care of all of God's creation. As people of God, as brothers and sisters to all of God's creatures, caretakers of all things, we ask these things of our Creator, joining with the earth and with each other to bring new life to the land, to restore the waters, to refresh the air, to renew the forests, to care for the plants, to protect the creatures, <coughs> to celebrate the seas, to rejoice in the sunlight, to sing the song of the stars, to recall our destiny, to renew our spirits, to reinvigorate our bodies, we join with the earth and with each other. To recreate the human community, to promote justice and peace, 
to remember our children. We join with the earth and with one another. We join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery. The healing of the earth and the renewal of all life on this earth day and every day. This we know. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. All things are connected like the blood which unites one family. For we did not weave the web of life. We are merely a strand of it. And whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. May God, the creator who made heaven and earth, Bless us with creativity and wonder. May Jesus, who walked through fields and cities, bless us with kind hands and listening ears. May the Holy Spirit, who is around us and within us, bless us with the courage to be caring and just. And may we work and walk in the strong love of the Trinity and all our nights, and days as we care for the gift of the world God gave us. May it always be so. Amen.